Well, hey, y'all. Thank you so very much for taking time. Come over here and visit with me over on Fritz's Cooking Again. I'm Fritz, and guys, it's Friday, so I reckon it's time for another Cooking Tips and Household Hints. And guys, in this video series, we're actually getting together just a single recipe for y'all, or I'm going to do some household hints, guys, which is going to be for the average homeowner with common household tools to make some repairs around the house, uh, whether it be like we did the dryer vent or installed a porch lamp, and I'm just going to do basic stuff like that that I think that y'all can handle. Um, guys, tonight, what we're actually going to be doing is a single recipe, and guys, what I'm actually going to be making for y'all is uh, some oyster stew, guys. I don't think I've ever done that on here before, and... And uh, this was one of my dad's very, very favorites, guys. And what we're going to be utilizing to make our oyster stew is going to be some of these fancy whole oysters, guys. I've got two cans of those. Uh, we're going to be utilizing a little bit of butter, some parsley flakes, some ground nutmeg, some all-purpose flour, some half and half, and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. And we're going to be adding some uh, common root vegetables to it, some onions, some carrots, and some uh, celery. Guys, we're going to have to have a little sandwich to go with it, so I'm actually going to make my souped up uh, uh, tuna fish sandwiches. And I like to utilize the chunk white albacore, guys, and we're going to soup it up with a little bit of pecans, a little bit of hot sauce, and I may add a little bit of onion and just a little bit of uh, uh, grated up carrot. And we're going to serve that on some, uh, some white bread here, guys. All right, y'all, let me uh, get after this, and uh, I'll see you in just one second. Thank you so very, very much for stopping by on Cooking Tips and Household Okay, guys, hands. I opened up my Bumblebee uh, Chunk White Albacore Tuna Fish here, and I went ahead and I got it in my strainer here, and I've got it over a little plastic bowl, and what I'll do is just kind of strain it out real well. And I'm sure all y'all have made tuna fish yourselves probably a thousand times, and I'm sure y'all have got some wonderful homemade recipes, but this is mine here, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my well-drained albacore tuna and I'm going to go ahead and get it into my mixing bowl. Like so. Alright guys, spread this out just a little bit. Alright guys, what I have here, I have uh, one egg uh, finely chopped. I've got about a tablespoon of uh, carrots that we grated. I've got a little bit of celery, probably about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of celery and onion, about one tablespoon. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get this on down into the mix. Get all them good carrots out. Now, we just started putting carrots in our tuna fish, guys, and I'm here to tell you, I wish we'd have been doing it a long time ago, guys. It's, it's, it's delicious. All right, guys, let's give that a little simple stir. Now, what I'm gonna do, I like to utilize sweet relish. You could use dill relish if you wanted to but uh, this is what we, we prefer. And I'm gonna start off with one hefty tablespoon. All right, guys. Now, I love the Duke's mayonnaise, man. I'm so glad we're getting this here in Kentucky now. Uh, my sister used to have to actually send this to us from North Carolina. But uh, anyway, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with one hefty tablespoon of uh, Duke's as well. We can always add, but we can't take away. All right, guys, and what I'm going to do is do a little bit of fresh cracked black. And let's go ahead and give this a simple stir. Go ahead, and I'm going to take a little bit of my Texas peat, just a few drops. And I'm going to take uh, some pecans, probably about, a, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon or so. We'll, we'll judge those. Add more if you like them. All right, guys, take a peek at that. Okay guys, we got our up. easy uh, tuna fish salad done here guys, and I got it in my little serving container here. And what I'm actually going to do is uh, just take a little bit of paprika and put it right on the top guys. Just to dress it up, make it look pretty when we put it over on the table. And that's all there is to it y'all. I think it looks pretty daggone tasty. Get our cover on it. Get her on into the refrigerator. Let them flavors marry together. All right, y'all. Okay, guys, we're ready to get started with our oyster stew here. I've got uh, three tablespoons of butter down here in my pot here. And what we're getting ready to do is saute off a, a quarter cup of onions diced and a quarter cup of celery along with the leaves. All right, guys, let's go on and get this on down into the mix. Stir that up a bit. that coated. We're going to sweat these down real good. All 
All right, guys. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my dry ingredients. I have one tablespoon of parsley. I have one tablespoon of paprika. And I have a quarter teaspoon of pepper. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and stir this up. All we're going to do is soften them up real good, guys. Let those flavors blend and marry together. All right, guys, I'll get right okay, back. Okay, guys, we've got our second. onions and celery and parsley and paprika and pepper sauteing off really well. And while this is still going, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my two cans of oysters here. I've got uh, two cans of fancy whole oysters, eight ounces. And what I want to do is drain the juice off of them. Oh, some nice looking oysters, guys. Dang, oh, look at the size of them things. All right, guys, let me get my other can open here. And we'll let these drain really, really well, and we're going to res reserve the, uh, the oyster juice. All right, guys, we're going to let them sit there for a moment and do their thing, and this is just about done here. Keep an eye on them. You don't want to burn them. We're just sweating them down, getting them soft. All right, guys. I'll get right back to you. Okay, guys. More. I want to go ahead and get my vegetables out here, my celery and onions. I'm going to try to reserve as much of that butter as I can I'm using a slotted spoon here. I'll go ahead and get them on down into my bowl I'm going here. to actually take uh, a little bit of uh, butter here. I've got another tablespoon and a half. I want to bring that back up And we're gonna make like a, 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 a little bit of a roux if you will thickening agent All right guys, I'm, I've got uh, two tablespoons of flour basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this through make like a little roux You want to cook your flour Okay guys, our little bit of a roux here is looking pretty daggone good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take, uh, what I have here is uh, one, uh, one quart of uh, half and half, so, um, and ha the other half is just regular milk, guys. You can use, uh, uh, you know, all half and half if you want, or I guess you could use all milk if you want. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and dump my oysters in with our vegetables. And I'm going to take this water, this uh, oyster liquor that we had, and I'm going to actually pour that in with our half and half. And uh, this should, uh, you know, give it a really, really good taste. All right, guys. Let me get this heated back up. We don't really want to boil it. You'll curdle it. But we're going to get it heated up really, really thoroughly. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Our stew mixture has been heating through for a good, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so. And like I said, you want to keep an eye on it. You don't want it to start boiling or it'll curdle on you. All right, guys. Our next step. We're actually going to take uh, our oysters here and, we're gonna, and, and our vegetables and go ahead and get them on down into the mix. And what we want to do is just get this piping hot. And then we're going to actually take it over to our double boiler here where I have some water down at the bottom. And uh, basically this is called ripening. And what we'll do is we'll keep it warm and basically it'll make the flavors marry together without burning it. Because you know how quick oysters will go. But uh, alright guys, let's give this a simple stir. And this ought to be delicious guys. All right, guys, secret ingredients. We have the Lee and Perrin's Reduced Sodium Worcestershire Sauce. I'm going to go ahead and get just a couple drops of that in there. And the really secret ingredient, ground nutmeg, and that's just going to be a dash. All right, guys, we're going to get this stirred up a little bit more. Okay, guys, we've had our oyster stew cooking through for about eight minutes, and I made sure it doesn't come to the boil, guys. So I, what I did was I stayed after it, and I kept stirring it. Now what we're going to do is a term that they call ripening. And what we actually have here is a double boiler. I've got the bottom covered in water. 
And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our stew and transfer it over here. All right, guys, we got her in our, uh, our little double boiler we created here, and she's just floating around in there. So, like I said, it's just basically steeping, and the term is called ripening. So, we're going to let this go for like 15 minutes, and then we're going to get on the table, y'all, because it's All right, guys, wonderful. we got our cooking tips and household hints meal over to the table here, and I'm here to tell you guys, look at this oyster stew, y'all. Oh, just plum full of oysters and flavor. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We are talking next level yum. And guys, along with that, we're just gonna have a little bit of uh, tuna fish sandwiches. And uh, that's the tuna fish I just made up for y'all, my tuna salad, Fern Creek, Kentucky style. We got some really nice, beautiful, fresh uh, tomatoes here and a little bit of lettuce and some white bread and some oyster crackers from Skyline Chili, y'all. <laughs> all right guys let's get plated up and we're gonna get right back all right with guys you. we're all plated up with our oyster stew and our tuna fish uh, sandwich with a little bit of tomato lettuce look at that guys I put some little bit of parsley on there for garni and some uh, Texas peat right there in the center and some oyster crackers looks like mom's getting ready to get after it you want to try a little, little bit of it mom tell me what you think wow is it good that's five star are you serious yeah. All right, let me try some of it. Look at that, guys. Is it piping hot? It's not bad at all for canned oysters. Let's see. Oh my God. It's been years since we've had this. Years. Hmm. Oh my word, guys. I'm gonna size them oysters. It's out of this world. It's really rich, too. Mm hmm. tuna sandwich mm. this is a fantastic meal mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I gotta get more of this oyster stew guys look at that It is, it's really rich. Mm, so much taste. Oh my God, guys, I'm gonna have to get after this. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so very, very much for stopping by and visiting me over on uh, Cooking Tips and Household Hints where we actually showed you a recipe here. Well, you actually got two for one tonight. And uh, we did up uh, the oyster stew and I think my dad would have really loved this. And uh, we did up our tuna fish sandwich. And uh, that's really easy. And uh, But anyway, guys, y'all got to try this here. It, it, it didn't really cost that much to make. Just a couple of cans of those oysters. I think they're like two two fifty something like that piece. So you're looking at probably five bucks. Some half and half, some milk, and some root vegetables, and some butter. A little bit of flour. And you're good to go. All right, guys. Thank you so very, very much. I got I to gotta get busy with this. All right, y'all. Bye.